The strange music of Octavia. When I enrolled in Canterlot Academy, I knew I was going to learn all sorts of strange sayings. I had talent, oh yes, but not nearly enough for Celestia School for Gifted Unicorns. So it was the standard Canterlot Academy for me. But as well as learning in details how to conquer and banish, manipulate and illuminate, I learned outside of the school one single indisputable fact. Equestria is a weird, pl weird place. I've seen monsters in any pony's wildest dreams. I've seen whole city streets just up and vanish without, within a night. What may you ask do I mean by that? Well, it's the truth. No matter how many times I've tried, no matter how many maps I've poured over, paying attention to the tiniest details unimaginable, I have never been able to find the Rue de Lune. Not just the modern maps of Canterlot that are updated annually, but I've been even examined antique and ancient maps of the royal city. But despite all I do, it remains the same humiliating and bizarre truth that the Rue de Lune does not exist, and yet it still remains cemented in my memories. Those brief days I spent as a poor magic student in Canterlot, living in a small squaddle apartment on the very street, the street where I first heard Octavia's music. The fact that I cannot find it again is simply bizarre. I distinctly remember it, not just my living there, but even my journey from there to the academy, less than a half hour's trot away. And yet, no pony I have spoken to knows anything about it. It wasn't exactly a prize spot, a steep narrow street with high apartments and buildings on both sides, with a deep canal on the, at the end. It seemed quite out of place, the canal along the shining white spires and rainbow hue streamed that crisscrossed the city. It was dark and murky, with a strange smell to it that I had never smelt before. But if I ever smelled again, I'd know I was close to the strange street, which in itself seemed out of place in Canterlot. As I crossed the bridge over the canal and walked up the street for the first time, I noticed how empty and quiet it seemed. Not another pony in sight, neither going in or coming out of the dark building. But I shrugged and I ma and made a left as I reached my new apartment building. Third from the top of the street and tallest of them all, my landlord showed me to my apartment on the fourth floor, which apart from myself was pretty much empty. It wasn't exactly the best apartment, one bedroom with a bed and a dresser, a simple bathroom and a large lounge in between, complete with a moth-eaten sofa and dining table. The royal palace it wasn't, but it surely beats living in a tent. I was low on funds, and this was the only place I could afford. My first night there, I laid in my bed, exhausted from the day's hard work at the academy. Around eleven at night, I stirred awake as I heard the drones of some stringed instrument, a cello. It seemed to come from the floor above, the top floor of the apartment, a strange and discordant drone unlike any music I had ever heard before. It seemed to loop from note to note effortlessly, bringing up the strangest of music in my dreams. From that little I know about music, I knew that these weren't notes from that any instruments should be making. The next morning on my way to the academy, I ran into my landlord. 
on the ground floor. Outside, greeting a side, I mentioned to him the strange cello music I had heard that night. The strange old pony nodded, telling me what I had heard was Octavia. Yush, she lives up on the top floor. Nice pony she is. Always says hello to me, or rather sm she smiles and waves to me. What do you mean? Well, she is very soft-spoken, you see. She used to be a great opera singer, but one day she just stopped. She just up and stopped singing. Mighty strange, if in you ask me. Hardly ever talks, either. Darn good player, though. She plays the cello for hire, doing solo concerts. Helping some of the local bands, you know? Uh, I dwelled for a moment on this. So, her, she lives on the top floor, then? Yep, all alone. I guess for a musician like her, it's ideal. No distractions, no disturbance. Just turn in the mu her music. She sure gets a great view from the floor. You probably could see all of Canterlot from the flo window. Why? Was she playing too loud for you? I shook my head. Oh no, not at all. In fact, it was quite nice to listen to. I was just curious. And so, night after night, I'd lay awake, eyes closed and eyes wide open. As I listened to the strange music, even with my limited knowledge of music, I knew that these melodies were beyond anything any musician could regard as normal. Perhaps she was some sort of musical genius, Octavia, the lonely, quiet pony with the impossible cello. The more I listened, the more fascinated I became, until one night, I made the decision to finally make her acquaintance. My luck could not have been better. The me next morning, as I returned once again from the academy, there on the staircase between the fourth and fifth floor, I bumped into her. At first glance, she looked like any other pony. A pale gray and brown coat with a dark brown mane that curled prettily at the tips around her neck and chest, with a delicate short fringe at the front, a cutie mark of a treble clef adorned her flank, and she wore a strange disembodied shirt collar and bow tie around her neck. She carried with her an, an air of world weariness, with the slightest hint of snobbiness. As I passed her on the stairs, I paused to greet her, introduce myself. For some reason, at my first words, she appeared either angered or frightened. She silently stood there, still, just staring at me. But as I began to talk about what the landlord had said about her, Octavia's expression softened. She smiled as I recounted her compliments about her bashfully pawing at the floor with a forehoof. She was clearly one who enjoyed compliments and was happy to oblige when I humbly requested to sit in one of her rehearsals. With her leading the way, we headed up those stairs to the sixth floor where her apartment was the only one. We went in, and what struck me at first sight was the sheer shabbiness of the apartment. It was a mess. The floors and walls were devoid of their respected, of their respectful carpet or plaster, leaving nothing but bare boards. The windows was curtained, leaving the room illuminated by nothing by a dim gas light hanging from the ceiling. The furniture were equally in despair, nothing more than an old bedstead, a dresser by the wall, and a few tables, each littered with, a, with piles upon piles of music sheets. And in one corner stood the cello, the instrument that had been keeping me up 
of its strange songs every night. It struck me at how ordinary it looked. I was half expecting some sort of custom design, or some bizarre argumentation. But nope, it was just a plain old cello, with a plain old bow. She motioned mutely for me to sit down on the bed, as she picked up the, her cello from the corner, blowing gently the dust off it in the, in the bow. Closing her eyes, she stood up in her le- on her hind legs and began to slowly play without any sheets or songbooks, playing entirely from memory, or perhaps giving the strange nature of the melodies inventing from the instrument from improvisation. She entertained me for about an hour, entertaining me with the stra- strains of music that likes of which I had rarely heard, enchanting I cannot deny, but notably devoid of any bizarre melodies I had heard her play before. When she finally came to my, an end of her music, of her playing, I tried to ask her about the other music I had heard her play. Her expression once again turned to the strange mix of anger and fright she had first worn when I had met her on the staircase. It unnerved me to see her unusual calm and placid expression suddenly change. So, but I, I persisted, asking her again and again about her music, even whistling a few bars of it myself. Without warning, she lunged at me, the cello falling to the floor. With an echo clunk, I, I backed against the wall, shocked as her hooves clamped firmly on my n- mouth. At the same time, her nervous glance turned to the curtain window, as if expecting some sort of burglar to suddenly burst through the black drapes. My curiosity was piked. Brushing her off, I got up from the bed and hurried to the window, eager to get a glance from this window. What view awaited me of the panoramic flo- rooftop? and the towers of Canterlot, a view that no pony but this lonely mare could enjoy, but Octavia would not have any of it. The moment I raised my hoof to brush aside the curtains, she batted my arm down with the bow of her cello. Now thoroughly disturbed and disgusted by my hostess and cradling a smarting forehoof to boot, I turned my to leave. I stopped, however, as I felt her hoof gently placed upon my shoulder. I turned to face her and f- saw that her expression had returned to her unusual gentle calm. I'm terribly sorry. She said quietly. The landlord wasn't kidding. She was so soft-spoken. I could barely hear her. Please. Sit back down, and let me explain myself. She implored, never one to say no to such a kindly face. I obediently returned to my seat on the bedside. The music you hardly heard me playing tonight, well, it's special. Her glances briefly turned to the black curtains covering the, the window before she returned to me and sat by my side. But, well, I don't like it when someone else plays my music. It's just not right. In my mind, I wondered what significance this music could have to her. Why those tunes in particular? And what did she mean, not right? I think I'll end it there for the night. It was nice meeting you. Indeed, I replied, taking to my hooves and heading towards the door. I could listen to your music all day. Perhaps we could do this again tomorrow. Then it was again the strange expression, the mixed emotions of anger and terror. But it passed within moments, and she smiled again. Of course. The next day I had to t- had a talk with the landlord to have myself moved another floor out of pity for Octavia. I thought it was wrong for me to eavesdrop. 
on her nightly playing that apparently was so personal to her. I was put in a room on the third floor, leaving the fourth completely empty. As the days passed, I became a regular visitor to Octavia's apartment, sitting in every evening on her rehearsal, but I noticed a change in her. By the third night, she no longer requested me to join her, and became uneasy and slightly reluctant whenever I visited her. This was always late in the evenings. She would never answer my knocking during the day. But my curiosity got the better of me, and every so often I would stop as I left and stand outside her door at night listening to her mysterious recitals. Whenever I would listen, I would be filled with a sense of dread and wonder. Not because the music was necessarily bad. Indeed, it had moments of some symphonic quality that assured me that Octavia was a tr great genius of music, playing with wild power as a melody, but the music held a strange and otherworldly quality to, the to it. Over the week, the pony became more reluctant to let me join her until the day came when she refused to open her door for me. After that night, she no longer spoke to me refusing my entry and shunned me on the stairs. But I, I continued to covertly listen outside her door regardless. One night, however, even her strange alien playing was blown away by what I had heard. Her music became more frantic, fast, violent, deeply frightening. Was she having a fit or something? I knew she wouldn't let me in, but I banged with a hoof on her door anyway. From within I heard the clattering of the cello once again falling to the floor, and the sliding sounds of curtains began hastily drawn. I jumped back without warning. There came a scrabbling at the door. It swung open and there stood Octavia in quite a state. Her mane was unusually smoothed, a tidy hung, unkept a frazzle as sweat drops. Sweat dripped down her face, and panting her fate, he broke into a relevant, relieved smile as she suddenly staggered forward and wrapped her forearms around my knees as if in supplicancy. Oh, thanks to the last year, it's you. Came her, vo her muffled voice, wheezing from exhaustion. I, I gently pried her off me. Octavia, what happened? Are you all right? She did not answer, but got to her hooves again, pulled me inside her apartment, which was now even more of a mess than usual. What the? What have you been doing in here? I asked, before my attention was drawn to the gentle flutters of the black curtains. Was the window open? But no answer came for a few minutes. She sat in silence, on the floor, her head nodding, strangely, as if listening intently to some unknown tune. As I sat down below, before her, I asked again, great gently, what had been going on. Once again, she said nothing, but instead got up and sh shifted through her sheets through her music sheets to find a small stack of strange manuscripts covering with chilling images and symbols. But as she returned to me with her, her papers, but as she returned with me with these strain with these papers, she froze, her mouth hanging comically open. She turned to face the obscured window with eyes wide expressions of pure and undiluted terror. I had heard it too, clear as anything, a low, echoing note. Cla carried on the night, air as if from one of the nearby houses. As it played on strange flutes or pipes, it sent a shiver down my spine. And still to this day, I have no idea why. Before I could do, I could say anything, she had jumped to her hoof, ran to pick up the cello, looping the bow onto her hoof, 
She stood up once again on her hind legs, putting bow to string. Once again she began her frantic, intense playing, sweat dropping, flying from her arms as she they moved back and forth with the bow, and up and down on the neck with one with some unheard earthly hideous melody. Louder and louder, faster and faster, Octavia played. Her entire body twisted with from the effort, her gazing firmly on the window. As if in response, there, there came st again the strange piping noise from before. But some, there came again the strange pipping noise from bef outside, with the same bizarre melody as her cello, but somehow calm and gentle, almost mocking her frantic playing. The curtains bellowed and flapped as the gust of wind suddenly picked up, blowing out the gaslight, leaving me in a terrifying world of discordant noise and pitch blackness. Finally, the wind rippled the black drapes from the hooks above the window, exposing the dark framed night skies. The gust of wind bore up the strange manuscripts that Octavia had been about to show me that now lay scattered around the room as they were carried out the window and into the night below. I tried in vain to catch a few of the pages before the gust pulled it away them out the window and in doing so, I finally got a good look outside that window. I expected to see a tall white tower of Canterlot and the lights in the windows as little dots in the night, but as, as the wild winds blew and the insane cello music howled on the winds, I saw no su such view. All I saw was space eternal, a great tunnel of darkness alive in the music and motion, a great void ever moving like a vortex of strange indescribable colors. It was as if looking into the physical form of chaos and madness given form. This incredibly terrifying sight was toppled off as I saw in the distance darkness of the indescribable tunnel. The movements of some great shadowy form approached out of the madness. I tore myself from the bizarre view, hurrying to Octavia's side. Ready to shake her out of her frantic, bacchanaled state, so that we may both flee before when whatever I had seen out that window came any closer. But she was beyond saving. Her eyes rolled back in her skull, and her mouth hung open as she continued her maniacal playing, eyes fixing on the sh window. As she appeared to direct her music in out into the darkness below, beyond, over and over, again I roared her name, I, I roared her name in her ear, barely able to hear myself over the cataphony, with the chaos and horror behind me, and the baying of the cello before me. I tried to grab her and drag her forcibly out. But she could not budge. Her skin clammy and cold, unbreathable. Her bulging eyes locked on the window. The calm pipping from, from out the window and the shrieking cello playing in harmony as if battling against each other. As the shadows approached the window, Octavia playing faster and faster until her bow was nothing but a blur, and I was certain the strings would burst in the flame from the friction, overturning whole tables in my frenzy flight. From the terrifying scene, I galloped out the door, down the stairs of the accursed apartment, and out the door I fled screaming down the street towards the dark water canal and leapt to cross the water, landing clumsily on the other side. The last thing I recall before I passed out from sheer exhaustion and terror 
I turned again to face down the damned streets and no longer saw the Rue de Lune. Across the canal was now a familiar rainbow hue of the canal of Canterlot. There was a busy crowded street with the standing with the standard white towers and houses down its sides. Since that day, I never returned, been able to find the Rue de Lune, nor have I ever been able, I ever found any records of a pony named Octavia playing in any orchestra or band nearby. But honestly, I'm not sorry, neither for the loss of that street, nor the loss of the strange mare, or those papers with those with their odd symbols and images that may have provided some explanations but something pony kind was not meant to know i guess and i must agree i don't want to know what i saw out that window in her apartment or how her music seemed to be affecting it was it attracting it or holding it back I may never know, and frankly, I don't care. I no longer care. Whatever power that mare held in her music, it was hers and hers alone. That strange music of Octavia. Hello everyone, this is Wolf Titan. Well, I hope you had enjoyed this little tale of suspense and terrifying Lovecraftian nature, and I want to thank my good friend who came, took her time to help do that, aka Midnight29. I'm curious, Midnight, what was your feelings for this reading? This was a creepy story, and I liked it. 